everyone what is up and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Danielle I'm finally back with a new video and I first off just wanted to say thank you guys so so much for 10,000 subscribers it's just crazy I can't believe I finally hit 10,000 and it's just amazing that from here on out my channel will just keep growing and growing and growing so I can't wait for what the future brings with my YouTube and this year I'm going to be posting a lot more and I'm just so happy and grateful for all of you guys who watch me. But yes, just wanted to say that. But for today's video, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be sharing with you guys 10 things that you need to know before becoming a hairstylist. I feel like once you leave hair school or beauty school, it's kind of just like, what do you expect? Like, I wish someone told me some things I should know. And I'm gonna be helping you guys today with telling you 10 things that are kind of more on like the con side of being a hairstylist, but don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my career. I love being a hairstylist. It's one of the best things that has ever happened to me. But you're always going to have those cons in a career. There's always ups and there's always downs. So yes, that is what today's video is going to be about. So if you'd like to hear the 10 cons slash things you should know before becoming a hairstylist, then just keep on watching. So the first thing is that this industry is super competitive. In my town alone, there are at least 20 hair salons and my town really isn't that big. So to have that many hair salons in my little small town, it's super competitive. And it's not so much the competitive factor of trying to win or beat other hairstylists. It's just the fact that because there are so many other hair salons to choose from, you have to be the one to stand out from all of the other hairstylists in your area. And with that comes a lot of competition because you want to get as many clients as you possibly can. But at the same time, you're competing with those other hairstylists in your area. The second thing is that you are going to start off slow. When you get out of hair school, you are not going to be making the big bucks that you would as a five-year hairstylist or a ten-year hairstylist. You are going to start off slow and you are going to start off with those low wages. When I first started, I started as a commission stylist, so I was making 46% of all of my services. With that being said as well, I also started off when COVID was really bad and the winter happened, so the winter caused COVID to skyrocket and I was out of work for quite some time. So that also was not very helpful. But when you first start out, you don't really have that big clientele. You're kind of growing as a hairstylist and trying to get acknowledged. So if you don't have a ton of clients, plus you're only making 46%, it's not gonna be a whole lot. But I promise you, if you just keep on going and don't give up and don't get defeated, it will all work out in the end. Number three is that it is a lot of stress on the body. And what I mean by that is that your feet are going to hurt, your hands are going to hurt, your arms, your knees, like your back, your back, your back is gonna hurt a lot. Nothing a good hot tub sesh can't fix at the end of your work day. No, but all jokes aside, it does put a lot of stress on the body when you're standing all day, blow drying and constantly moving your shoulders up and down. But a good solution to help with some of those pains are wearing comfortable shoes, taking the advantage of if your client is processing, just take a little seat if you can, rest those legs for a few minutes. But yes, lots and lots. Of stress on the body be prepared for maybe some good massage appointments some chiropractor appointments 
Number four is that it takes a while to build your clientele. I have been a stylist for a little over a year now and I would say I probably have about 175 to 200 clients but you also have to take into consideration that everyone's journey is going to be different. It all depends on how you go about the situation, how you put yourself out there, how your clients react to your work and tell other people about you. It's it's a little bit of everything, so everyone's going to be different. It might take you longer to achieve the clientele you would like. It might take you less time. All about the work that you put in. But again, do not be discouraged. Do not give up. Do not let it get to you if it takes you a little bit longer to grow that clientele that you're looking for because it will happen. Number five, this one is some tea. But you're going to have to deal with a lot of confrontation. Whether you like it or not, I know there are so many people out there that absolutely hate confrontation. There's some people that are good at it. There's some people that don't mind it, but don't really want it to happen. But unfortunately in this industry, you're just gonna have to deal with it. You're always gonna have to deal with those clients that just are never happy. You're going to have to know when to say no tell the client, no, this is not achievable. No, this is not going to happen today. No, you have box dye on your hair. Um, not gonna be platinum today. <laughs> like you just have to deal with being that strong person that is true with your client. You can't just sit back, lay back, let it just happen, let your client tell you what to do like you have to be that stronger person and confront them and let them know the truth so if you're someone that really 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 does not like confrontation but you really want to be in this industry just take some time to work on it because it's going to happen number six is that you're going to have to put a lot of time and money into this industry if you want to be great with that being said you're going to have to keep upgrading and updating your tools as far as like curling irons blow dryers clippers shears and that starts to become a lot of money also if you're one who really thinks that classes and hair shows benefit you from learning that is also a lot of money and you're just gonna have to put a lot of time into learning all new techniques whether it be spending time on youtube watching videos or whatever the case may be like i said taking classes but you are going to have to put in that extra time and money to further your education and learn those new techniques Number seven is that you need to do your own marketing. And by this, I mean Instagram, any type of social media, business cards, like I could go on and on. But for my marketing, I do a lot of Instagram. Um, I do a little bit of Facebook, but my main source of marketing is Instagram. Even though you work at a salon, if you work at a salon of course they do their own marketing but for you as an individual you need to showcase your work and put your work out there so that other people can see what you do and if they like it then they're gonna want to come to you because that's basically your only way of showing what you do that's your overall portfolio so if you don't do Instagram or any type of marketing social media whatever it is it's probably going to be a little bit harder for you to build that clientele when you're first starting out. So definitely keep that in mind that you will have to do your own marketing with whatever sources you have, but I definitely recommend Instagram being your main source. Number eight is that you are going to have some bad months. With being a hairstylist, you are never going to have consistent income. One month you could make $8,000, one month you could make ten thousand dollars one month you could make four thousand dollars it's never going to be consistent especially in those slower seasons actually perfect example right now <laughs> once christmas happens it's kind of just like january february 
kind of peaks back up in March and then I feel like once you hit April through summer it goes back up the slope again so right now I mean January for me wasn't horrible it definitely was not the best but it's just something that's expected in this industry not every month is going to be good you're going to have slow and low paid months but it is what it is and you just got to remember that summer is always so so good that it's kind of okay to be slower in january and february but yes it's never going to be consistent and you're always going to have some of those bad months but again don't give up and don't get discouraged number nine is that you're going to be a therapist <laughs> If you're someone that does not like to listen to people's problems or doesn't like to have people rant to you or vent to you, then this probably isn't <laughs> a career for you. Pretty much, I'd say like 80% of my clients consider me as like part of a therapist because they always ask for advice on stuff. They're always telling me the things that are happening in their life, especially if it's like a closer client who sees me more often. I feel like they always tend to share a little bit more as well. And they're going to expect you to listen and kind of give your feedback. <laughs> so just be prepared for that. And the last one, number 10, is that you are going to struggle with finding time for yourself at work. So this meaning eating lunch, eating a snack, going to the bathroom, taking a break for just sitting down, taking a sip of water. <laughs> like again, because I'm in the slow stage right now in January, it was a little bit easier because I was slower, but in those summer months and beginning of fall months, it gets so hectic, especially with wedding season. I found like no time for myself especially if i had to go to the salon leave to go to a wedding and then come back to the salon after a wedding oh, no time to eat no time to go to the bathroom <laughs> nothing especially if you're one of those stylists who loves to double book forget it <laughs> There will be no time. It's fine because once you leave work, you can just go home and have a phenomenal dinner. <laughs> Alright, so those were all of the 10 things that I believe you should know before becoming a hairstylist as far as like the cons go. But again, those really aren't terrible cons and being a hairstylist is amazing. If you're thinking about becoming a hairstylist, definitely do it because it is so much fun. I absolutely love it. It is such a great career, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this helped some of you guys. If it did, don't forget to leave a huge thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys! Yeah.